Okay, so here we're going to look at um, a nonlinear inequality. So 2x plus 5 over x plus 1 is less than or equal to 1. Now this is tricky because um, you want to solve for x, but you can't cross multiply. You don't know, for example, you can't do x plus 1 times 1 because we don't know if x plus 1 is positive or negative, and that matters because that would really impact the direction of our inequality. So we can't do that. What we can do safely, though, is subtract on both sides. So I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. And we get 2x plus 5 over x plus 1 minus 1. Now I'm going to re rewrite 1 as x plus 1 over x plus 1 so I can combine these two fractions. And I get, see up here, 2x minus x is just x, and 5 minus 1 is 4. Okay. So here we're trying to figure out when this ratio is less than or equal to 0. And there are two interesting x values to note. If x equals negative 4, then the whole thing is 0, right? Um, and I'll say then, I'll call this thing, let's go up here. Oh, then I'll say, I'll just write this way, x plus 4 over x plus 1 equals 0. And if x equals negative 1, then we're dividing by 0. And then x plus 4 over negative 1 plus 1 is 0, right? And that would be division by 0. And that's undefined. So what we do is we write out this, this single fraction, look at the top and bottom, numerator and denominator, and look at points of interest. Because around those points of interest, when our, our ratio is 0 or undefined, that's where we can expect to possibly see a change in sign. And that's important because we're trying to figure out when this thing is less than or equal to 0, right? How do we do that? Well, we want to figure out when it's negative or positive, when the signs change. So we look at those interesting values. So then what I would do is uh, kind of evaluate my signs around those points. At negative 4, I'm going to put an open circle. That's, when x is negative 4, it's undefined. And at, nope, I got that backwards. When x is negative 4, it's 0. And when it's negative 1, it's undefined. So I put an open circle there. So my little, little terrible number line here, but solid line and dash line to remind me when I could use those values. And we'll get x plus 4 and x plus 1, and then their ratio. And because it's getting cluttered, let me just move this over. Okay, there's a highlighting piece. Okay. So I want to look at, I want to plug in values in x plus 4, x plus 1, see if it's positive or negative, and then look at their ratio. x plus 4 over x plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little table, and here's what I mean. So we only we know that the signs will only really change around these values. So if I plug in, let's say, negative 10 into each of these, what's going to happen? Well, negative 10 plus 4 is negative. Negative 10 plus 1 is negative, and two negatives divide to a positive. So I know that when x is less than negative 4, this thing is positive. Now, when I pick numbers between negative 1 and negative 2, any number, just have it be between, and I'll pick negative 2. Negative 2 plus 4 is a positive. Negative 2 plus 1 is a negative, and a positive divided by a negative is a negative. Over here, I'll pick 0. It's above negative 1. We get a positive. 0 plus 4 is positive. 0 plus 1 is positive, and that's positive. Now, they want to know when is this ratio less than or equal to 0. So um, it's here, right? It's when it's negative. So that's going to be, use interval notation, including negative 4, all the way up to negative 1, but not including negative 1 because it's undefined there. So this signs analysis, it's called, really helps us figure this out. Uh, another interesting example that doesn't necessarily require a signs analysis is a quadratic. Anything that you can graph easily will not require the same level of analysis, just like this one right here. Um, if we subtract x on both sides, you get x squared and subtract 3. Minus 3 is greater than or equal to, that's totally wrong, I apologize, 2x squared minus x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So what I just did was I subtracted the x and 3 over to the left-hand side. And in this case, you want to know, when is this thing greater than or equal to 0? Now, you could factor it, and I'll show you um, how to proceed from there. But right here, you want factors of negative 6, so 2x and x, that add to negative 1. So I'm thinking negative 3 and 2. Um, right, so negative 3 and 2. So we get a 2, put a plus 1 here because 2x times 1 is 2. And then over here, put negative 3, and this should work. Let's just check it. 2x times x is 2x squared, plus 2x minus 3x. That gives the minus x in the middle, and then negative 3 at the end. So this tells me that um, this is the factored form of this 
left hand side right here. Now we are looking at an inequality when it's greater than or equal to zero, but let's just imagine it, uh, if it was equal to zero. So let's just rewrite it 2x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals 0. Because if we're trying to find when this thing is positive or negative, we clearly want to look at the values around 0. So these are going to be important points. And this happens when x is negative 1 and when x is 3 over 2. Just solve for x in both cases. Those are our roots, right? So if I graph this, I got negative 1 here. And then 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. So like here's 1, so maybe right here. Let me do a better job plotting this out. Here's 1 and here's 1. Now this is a parabola. The a value is positive. It's going to cross at negative 3, but it's not really important. Uh, we just want to know that it opens upward, because then we can see the answer. We're trying to figure out when is this parabola greater than or equal to 0. Well, it's going to happen when we're greater than or equal to 3 halves, or less than or equal to negative 1. So these regions here. So you can say x is greater than or equal to 3 halves, and x is less than or equal to negative 1. And that would be our answer. Now, if you want to do a science analysis, you can do that as well. You want to know when it's positive. You just you know you would know that it equals zero at negative one, and then three halves. Draw a little number line again. Better job there. And then just write the factors: two x minus three, and then x plus one, and then their product down here. Finally, two x minus three times x plus one. And the science analysis works in basically the same way. Everything's solid here because we can include these values. Again, I know that because they're both greater than or equal to 0, and nothing's undefined here. So plug in a value below negative 1, negative 10, let's say. So that would give you negative 20 minus 3, that's negative. Negative 10 plus 1 is negative, and their product is positive. And pick a number between negative 1 and 3 halves, so plug in 0. Again, a negative, right? 0 minus 3 is negative. A positive, and that's negative. You can see that down here. And then if I plug in, let's say, 2, I get 4 minus uh, 3, which is positive. 2 plus 1 is positive. It's a positive ratio. So you can see that it's in this region and this region here. All right, I hope that helped.